Hi guys. Today is August the 13th. It is 9.30 in the morning approximately. And I just want to welcome you to my very first Floss Tube video. My name is Jen. I am also known as Miska Cat on Facebook and I believe also on Ravelry is um, what I'm known as as well. Um, this is my fifth attempt, I think, at trying to do this video. I had actually done one yesterday and for the life of me couldn't figure out how to get it uploaded onto YouTube. So I figured Saturday morning house will be nice and quiet, or so one would think and I will be able to sit down and redo it. And the fates are not, not cooperating with me today, so I should be good now. I should be good. Um, we'll see how this goes. You might get um, some cat bloopers at the end of this video because I have two very needy felines this morning. So hopefully I can get through this and actually get this uploaded. Um, I figured uh, for the first video I was going to do the Know Your Needleworker tag. Um, I know it's an older, older tag, but I feel like it's appropriate for a first video. Um, I also have a couple whips that I'm working on, and I'm going to show you a couple finishes. It's obviously not going to be all my whips and all my finishes, because I think that would be a little, a little overwhelming for everybody for our first video. So I'm going to show you what I'm currently working on, um, a recent finish and one that's fully framed or fully finished, I guess, kind of, <laughs> and another one that I'm just really kind of proud of. So um, bear with me. Hopefully we can get through this together and let's get started. So the Know Your Needleworker tag, the very first question is where do you live? I live in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Um, I've lived here since 2000, so that's been 16 years. I love it here. It's a um, big city, but kind of not so hustle and bustle as some of the other bigger cities. So um, it's kind of a nice mix for me. Um, we live in a quieter residential neighborhood, so that's kind of nice as well too. Um, Summer times are fantastic here. There are so many festivals going on and there's so much to do. And it's it's definitely not a boring place to live. So um, right now they have the Fringe Festival going on. I think it's the biggest or second biggest here in Canada. Um, so the Fringe Fest is a lot of theater and performing arts and there's street performers and vendors and all sorts of things happening. So. Um, yeah, like I say, it's, it's busy. Um, we just finished, um, we had our K-Days and we had Taste of Edmonton and we had Heritage, Heritage Festival. So there's been, there's been a lot going on and there's definitely no, no reason to be bored here during the summer. Um, we definitely, I feel like because our summers are so short, um, we make kind of the most of it, so it, it's it's nice. I love it. So, um, second question is, what do I do for a living? I work for Canada Post. I'm a letter carrier, so I get the the joy of delivering everybody's haul to them, um, whether it's stitching or whatever your interest is. Um, also, obviously, the bills that go along with it, and yeah. I love it. Um, I love being outside. Not quite so much in the winter when it's, you know, minus 30, but in the summer it's great. Actually in the winter it's great too. Um, I like that it keeps me busy and active and that I don't feel so bad about sitting on my butt and stitching for a few hours every night because at least I've done something all day. <laughs> um, the third question is, what are three favorite hobbies other than stitching? And here comes Cat again. Nope. Nope. He's been distracted. Um, my three other favorite hobbies. Stitching is obviously my passion. Um, that's what I spend probably 90% of my free time doing. Um, I kind of go through 
when I lose my stitchy bug, I do tend to pick up knitting or crocheting. Um, I'm actually working on this pattern right here. It's it's called the Luna Moth Shawl. It's by Alan. So I'm working on this, and this is kind of how far I've gotten so far. So I'm not super far, far ahead, but I kind of had an urge to pick up some knitting the other day. So um, I picked this pattern because I've actually done it before, and I really enjoyed it. And sometimes, some for some reason. It's just not cooperating with me this time. I've had to frog it repeatedly, and I'm actually getting kind of frustrated with it. This is why I'm not a big knitter. Because um, this is the stuff that I like to knit. I like to knit like the lace and, and something that has a pattern to it, um, cables and stuff like that. But I have to be extremely focused on it. I can't have any background noise. I can't have anybody talk to me. Um, I make a lot of mistakes. I don't know why, and I find it very frustrating. So it's not really a relaxing hobby for me. Um, I do enjoy it, but it's not relaxing at all. It's frustrating. But I like the, the finished product, so I suck it up every once in a while. Um, so I knit a little bit. I also do a little bit of crochet. I know how to crochet, but um, I try and keep it to just dish claws and whatnot else because I actually do prefer the, the look of knitted projects to crocheted, um, even though crocheting is way less stressful, way easier, and less time consuming. But I prefer the the, the finished product of knitting. So um, so I do those, those two. Um, I also game a little bit. Um, I have a Diablo account or a battle net account um, so I've been playing Diablo 3 a little bit I kind of go through spurts with that too where I don't I don't do it for like months and then I'll sit down and I'll spend like a weekend just just playing on on the computer or, or whatever I also love Mario I'm a Mario fan so anyways classics um, and I do a little bit of reading, not a whole lot, but I'm trying to get back into back into reading because I used to be a very avid reader when I was in high school and not quite so much the last couple years. So I'm trying to get back into it, um, trying to get back into it. Um, the last book I read actually took me a ridiculous amount of time to read. I had um, invested about half the book worth of time into it and then lost complete interest but because I had invested that time I'm like nope I'm gonna finish it and I should have just put it away and started something else because it dragged on for like four years <laughs> so yeah I learn need to learn to cut my losses and just do what makes me happy anyways um, question number four do I have any children no I do not have any children um, but that goes into question number five. Do I have any pets? I have two fur babies. So they have, I think I said this at the beginning of this video, they've both been extremely needy. Um, so I actually have one in the kitchen. I actually kind of locked him in there with his food and water and a bed. And trust me, he's not being neglected or by any means, but he was very needy. You'll see him at the end of this video, guaranteed. And my other one, um, who also made an appearance on one of my earlier takes, so you'll probably get to see him later too. Um, yeah, so I have two fur babies. Um, I just also wanted to kind of touch on the um, my name on Facebook and YouTube and Ravelry, the Miska Cat. She was um, my first fur baby. Um, we had to put her down last year, um, so I actually contemplated um, shutting down all my accounts and figured, no, that would be kind of silly. So I decided to kind of keep keep her her username as my name, and yeah, so she's 
she's not around us anymore, but um, that is a, a photo of, of her, the profile picture. So she was, she was a sweetheart. I miss her, but you know, we'll see you again. So anyways, the other two that I have now, I have Sawyer, which is, um, I think he's part Maine Coon. He's um, like a brown tabby, long haired. Um, and then the other one, his name is Sterling and he's the all gray one. So, um, so yeah, those are my two fur babies. Um, question number six, what is my favorite movie? I have to say I'm not, not a big movie person. I have a hard time investing time in a movie. Um, yeah, so I actually just finished watching Guardians of the Galaxy probably like two months ago. That was the last movie, new movie that I remember watching. And it's 2016. Uh, so I'm a little bit behind the times. Um, my favorite movie, or one of my favorite movies though, is um, Princess Mononoke. If you haven't seen it and you like anime, um, I highly recommend that one. It is awesome. Um, I'm a big, big anime fan. Um, especially any Miyazaki's movies. I think they're fantastic and they're just beautiful to watch. So um, I absolutely love that movie. You could watch it repeatedly. Um, I find when I'm stitching, I need background noise. So I will throw in a movie. Usually it's one that I've seen already, so I don't have to pay attention to it. Um, and although I haven't seen them, I do throw in Lord of the Rings quite a lot um, because they're so long and then I don't have to get up and like change the CD or the DVD um, repeatedly. So I've never actually watched the Lord of the Rings. I've listened to them repeatedly, but I've never actually sat down and watched them. So yeah, I'm a terrible movie person. <laughs> Uh, my favorite TV show, again, kind of the same thing. I don't really watch anything with a plot for the most part. Um, again, the TV's on for, for background noise or whatever. Um, usually it's like History Channel or Discovery. Um, I love things like um, any ghost shows um, or like... Um, hunting monsters like Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster, any kind of, um, I guess, Expedition Unknown with Josh Gates. That's a good one. I've seen that one a few times. So, um, so yeah, stuff like that I like, I like having on. But for plot, plot wise, mm, if I had to. If I had to pick one, it would probably be Six Feet Under. It's, again, an old... Oh, you know what? I like Six Feet Under. I've also been into um, American Horror Story. That's a good one, too. Although I'm a couple seasons behind. I'm still on... Sorry. I'm still on Freak Show. So I still have to get about halfway through that season. And Hotel, and they just started a new... Or they're going to be starting a new season. So I need to... Uh, to get busy and marathon watch some of that so I can get kind of caught up. So, um, what is my favorite music? I like pretty much anything. Um, I don't do country, but um, I like anything. Um, I love going to watch um, concerts. I've actually gone to a couple concerts where I knew very little about the artist. Um, news with somebody like that. We, um, I knew a couple of their songs, um, kind of just what was, what was being played on the radio or whatnot else, and bought tickets to go see them. And it was probably one of the best concerts I've ever been to. It was, it was awesome. They they did a very good show. Um, but I pretty much like anything. I like um, punk to metal to. Um, pop. Um, I listen to music a lot when I'm when I'm at work doing my walk and it's 
just a mix of like everything. So, um, but yeah, a favorite artist. Mm, I don't know. I don't think I could, I don't think I could pick one. They had, um, X ambassadors. They were playing at, um, K days a couple weekends ago and we went to go watch them and they were, they put on a good show too. And it was a free show. So, I mean, you got to go watch them with your gate admission. So that was, that was awesome. And yeah. Yeah. So like I say, I'll, uh, I'll go watch anything. I like a lot of local music too. Just going to different venues and just checking out like local bands and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, to narrow it down to a certain genre or, um, artist, it's really hard to do. So, um, question number nine, I believe it is. What is my favorite book? Um, I read the Harry Potter series. That was awesome. Um, but I think my favorite book um, would have to be Stephen, not Stephen King, Dean Koontz. He had a book, um, I think it came out in 99. It's an older one. It was called Watchers. And I absolutely love that book. I absolutely love that book. It was a bit of a, a thriller, a thriller and... Um, you know what, even, um, yeah, you just sympathize with all the characters in it, like, even, even the bad guys. It was, it was such a well done book, and, you know, I got really engrossed by that one, and I think I read it within a week. So, a week for one book, four years for another. <laughs> I need to, uh, pick my, my reading material more, more appropriately, I think, so. But that was a good, that was a good read. Same with the Harry Potter, I think I read... Um, each of the books within a week, um, of course, like the, the first and, and second books, they were quite a bit smaller. That would be done in a day or two. And then some of the bigger, um, like Order of the Phoenix and, and whatnot, 700, 600 page ones. Um, I got through those pretty quick, um, cause they were interesting, right? So kind of get lost in the story, but um, I am trying to, like I say, read a little bit more, so, um, I was actually watching, um, the lovely Array Mackenzie's videos, and she was showing off her book collection, and I have since then picked up a couple of the McSweeney books, so I have only actually received one. I have, um some more coming in the mail. So I'm looking forward to getting through those. Um, and maybe some, from my understanding, they're like shorter stories. So maybe that'll kind of help me get back into reading a little bit more. So we'll see how that goes. And then the last question is one word that describes yourself. Um, I think everybody always struggles with this one. Um, nobody really quite knows how to describe themselves in one word. That's that's quite a challenge. Um, if I had to pick one word, I would probably have to say honest. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, how you see it is how it is. So I try not to hide, hide feelings or, you know, opinions a lot. Um, yeah. So let's go with that. So yeah, that's the Know Your Needleworker tag. So um, the next thing I wanted to show you was a couple of the whips that I'm working on. Um, I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I have um, kind of a screaming rotation where I have an easier piece that I work on in the morning before I go to work. So it varies between a half an hour to an hour and a half on average most mornings that I actually get to work on this this one piece um, um, and then in the evenings I work on something more involved so um, the piece right now that I'm working on in the morning is the lakeside needle needle craft um, stitch along I'm normally very terrible with keeping up with stitch alongs um, but I'm gonna try really hard on this one 
Um, so I, I ordered the pattern when it, when it came out, well shortly after it came out, and started working on the border. Um, and I think I ran into the same problem that a lot of people did, is the border's pretty detailed, and trying to get it all done in a month before the first, the first square came out, um, um, it, it, it wasn't going to happen. So I started with the circles and got the August circle done and just kind of worked out from there. Um, so then I had at least the circle ready for when the August block was released. So I've done the August block and I'm using that hour now to kind of go through and work on, on the border and I'm going to try and get that kind of worked on and finished up and I'm going to keep doing the blocks as they come out hopefully and in the meantime like I said I'm just going to work on the border. On this one I'm also um, subbing out um, kind of like what Katie um, the stash queen is doing. So I'm using variegated and hand dyed um, silks and cottons. I'm using a combination because some, some of the colors just work better for certain things. So I'm, I'm doing that with this one. I'm going to sub it all out. Um, I did it for the August Pegasus block and I'm really happy with everything except for my Pegasus is a little bit on the grayer side. I might frog that out, but I'm going to wait till the end and see how I feel about it when it's all done. So this is what I've done so far. So I have six of the circles done. I have the Pegasus done, and now I'm just working on the border, so. So yeah, like I said, the Pegasus is a little, a little darker than I might like. I, it doesn't bother me on the, his legs, but on his face, I kind of wish it wasn't quite so splotchy, so I might, I might frog that out, so. But that's. That's what I have done right now. Um, and I'm doing this on, what kind of fabric is this? This is 32 count Belfast in Crystal Pansy by Picture This Plus. So you can kind of see the sparkles. I'm like, fantasy cell, I need, I need sparklies. So. So yeah, and I'll get, that's my, my Pegasus, so. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this. Um, I actually saw the border and I'm like, I need to, I need to do this because the border is just, the border is just beautiful. So, so I'm working on this. Um, yeah. Oh, I should also say this is my needle minder, a little red riding hood um, that was given to me by a friend um, and it's from uh, Erica Sage, True North Minders, um, based on the back because she always does the, she doesn't just put a magnet, she puts an actual object onto the back that you can actually, I find it helps kind of grab onto it. Um, so I love it. So that's this one. So this is my morning hour a day project that I'm, that I'm currently working on. Right now my, my calling kind of is my chatelaine. I am working on the butterfly lace mandala and Excuse me. And this is how much I have um, done on this one. Stand back so you can kind of see the whole thing. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> there we go. That looks better. So right now I'm currently working kind of in this top corner on the filigree. Um, 
I'd actually like to finish that little corner and then there's going to be another another butterfly like this guy up in the, the corner here and then another larger butterfly in the center. And I'd like to get that far before I actually swap out. Um, but I was working on this one last night and I kind of wasn't really feeling it. I might give it another go before I put it away. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I might, like I say, try working on it again for another night and see if I if I have a little love left for it. Um, I've been working on it, ooh, excuse me, I've been working on it since about this big butterfly here. So I've done all of this in one in one go and I think I might be burning out a little bit on it. So, so we'll see what happens. Um, on this one I'm actually doing the beads as I go. Let's see if you can kind of see the beads that are on there. So I'm doing the beading as I go. Um, there's a lot of beads on this one, so I didn't want to leave them all to the end. Um, but I'm kind of regretting doing the beading as I go on it now that I have some of them on. Um, when I roll it on my Millennium Frame, I feel like it's, especially the big crystals, is kind of stretching out the fabric on the back. Um, I'm going to carry on doing it this way. <clears throat> I do try and loosen it at night when I'm when I'm not working on it, but um, I think this will be the last. I actually have another Chatelaine on the go as well too. I'm doing the Halloween, the Halloween Kitty Mandala, and I started doing the beading on that one as well too. Um, but I think when these two are done, I'm going to keep all the beading till the end, like Martina recommends. Um, I'm still going to do the specialty stitches and everything else as I go, but um, but for the beads, I'm going to leave them till the end because I'm just I'm getting a little stressed out by the whole thing. So I'm going to keep the sun rolled and kind of maybe maybe it'll kind of spring back and what else. I'm sure it'll be fine when it's washed and and ironed and it's framed. I don't think that you're going to be able to notice, but I just starting to stress out a little bit. So um, I should also show you, this is my, my needle minder for this one. It's just a sparkly butterfly. I think I got this one, um, I don't know who it's by, but I got it from, I want to say 123 Stitch. I just ordered it from, from their website, but it's a pretty bark butterfly. It's appropriate for, for this piece. So, and this one I'm doing on um, I want to say 32 count Queen Anne's lace, and I'm not too sure who the manufacturer is, um, but I absolutely love, love this fabric. It's so nice and neutral, and just has very subtle modeling to it, um, so I think it works really well um, for this piece. So I'm really, really enjoying it. So, so that is that one. Those are the two the two projects that I've been kind of focusing the majority of my time on right now. So hopefully the next time you see them I will have some more progress to show you on them. Um, if I'm not feeling the butterfly lace anymore I do have two heaven and earth designs that I'm debating on that I'm kind of itching to stitch so we'll see what happens. Um, so you might you might see some more progress on this one, or you might see something entirely different. And hopefully, I'm going to keep with working on my um, um, my stitch along in the mornings because um, I I do want to keep up with this one. I actually started the Elizabeth Almond Pandora's Box stitch along, and the first couple months I did I did really good, and then I really fell behind really fell behind and I haven't I haven't worked on it since. So that's another one that I really want to try and get finished up. Actually I was thinking um, with the Lakeside Needlework um, so once I get the border done and I'm just doing the monthly block I think I'm gonna work on the Pandora's box in the morning um, when this one is done and I I can't work any further ahead on it so I think that's going to be my plan because I do want to get that one finished as well too. So 
that's my goal. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple finishes. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is actually my last, my last morning piece um, that I was working on before the, the stitch along started. And this one is Raven by Nora Corbett. And she started off as, I'm just going to work on her an hour in the morning, every morning. And I kind of became a little obsessed over her, um, where she was all I wanted to work on. So I finished her in about a month, which um, I was actually pretty impressed with. Um, and I've stitched her on, what did I stitch her on? 32 count Jazz Lugana from Picture This Plus again. And I love this fabric, and I should have actually cut it down a little bit, um, but I was worried, I was worried. I could have probably gotten two of the witches on here, but I didn't. Um, so anyways, this is, this is her, this is, um, like I say, this is Raven. And I stitched her um, according to the pattern. Um, I did do the skin one over one though. And I did kind of screw up on the back stitching. I didn't read read the whole pattern properly, and I just did all the back stitching with one strand of uh, DMC black. So I think she turned out okay. I don't think that you would notice that she was supposed to be outlined in a different color unless you knew the pattern. So I'm happy. I'm happy with her. So so that is how she turned out. And I do have to say. Maybe I'm the only one. I feel like ever since I've been doing my my Chatelaine, um, I'm spoiled by using the Delica beads. I didn't really enjoy using the Mill Hill ones very much on this one. They were different sizes and they didn't seem to to lay quite as nice. I mean, now that it's done, it looks it looks fine and beautiful. Um, but I had problems getting some of them to fit properly, and they still don't really fit as nice as I would like them to. I'm hoping once they're stretched out like you can kind of, I don't know if you can see, in her dress like this one right here. Like they're just, they're not really in a very straight, straight line. Anyways. But that's, that's actually pretty true for the fabric too. It's kind of bluey, purpley, mottled, but yeah, I really love the way that she turned out. And like I say, I got, I got totally obsessed over her, um, and just needed to finish her. So I'm really happy with the way that she turned out. So what I'm going to do with her, I'm not too sure yet. Um, I do apologize for the crease marks as well too, because I know a lot of people do that. They finish things and they fold them up and they throw them in a drawer and I am no different. So I do have a couple other pieces that I would like to get turned into like pillows, like some accent pillows and some other little things like that. There's a couple that I do want to get framed, um, but framings, as I'm sure you all know, is very expensive. So um, yeah. and. I don't have a whole lot of wall space, so yeah, one day. I need to pick and choose my pieces wisely and carefully. So, um, The other piece that I want to show you is my Victoria sampler that I did. I did this one about a year ago, um, and I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. I had never done hard anger before. Um, and I think I actually started this before I did my Chatelaine. So this was kind of my first attempt at some specialty stitches. Um, and I really loved it. It's um, the Trick or Treat by Victoria Sampler. I had bought in the embellishment pack. So it came with all the threads. I didn't have a problem running out with any of them. I absolutely loved it. Um, so this is the whole thing. So it's a longer, skinnier piece. This actually didn't take me very long to stitch at all. Um, once I kind of got got into it, um, but like I said, I had never done hard anger before. I had never done drawn thread work before, 
and I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Um, this one I think I want to put into a bell pull, so I need to get the um, the top and the bottom metal scroll pieces, and then I'm gonna try and finish this. So I'm just gonna show you a couple close-ups. So this is, oop, that is the top. It's got some satin stitches for the ground, and some beadwork. Oh, I just, I absolutely love this piece. I don't. I'm a huge Halloween fan. I love autumn. Um, not so much a Christmas fan, but um, I do love Halloween. So, and then it's got the little harvest harvest spot with the the pulled pulled thread work band. And I have to say, doing cut work. Like this band has a little bit of cut work in it. it was terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. But once I did it, it actually wasn't really that bad. And it's got it really wasn't that bad. And you know what? I would suggest anybody at least just try it. Get a scrap piece of fabric, get like a little freebie pattern. There's tons of Harding or freebie patterns out there. And just try it. Get a really sharp pair of scissors. And it's really not, it's really not so bad. Love, I love this band. I love the way the colors turned out in it. The variegated threads. I just, everything about this piece, I just love it. And the trick-or-treaters. And then that is the hard anger at the bottom. How is that not like the coolest thing? That is just so cool. I love that spider web in there. I love it. I absolutely love it. So and I actually have to say, the Victoria Sampler, the instructions were so clear. Um, like, she was so detailed with the instructions. Um, and yeah, just this whole thing was just so well explained. And the diagrams were fantastic. And I mean, yeah, I, I actually have another one that I'm going to start soon um, in September, actually. Because um, I just, I want to do another one of her pieces so bad. Because... It was so much fun and it it stitched up so fast too right so I find with um, doing the full coverage pieces like the heaven and earth and the Tilton and and whatnot else it's kind of nice to have some some smaller quicker finishes in there and I mean despite the fact that this had specialty stitches and whatnot else in it um, it just it seemed to stitch up and I got to finish so much faster so kind of need some small gratification in the middle of um, some of the bigger pieces. So, so yeah, I absolutely love that. Love it. Love it. So, like I say, if you want to try some different different stitches and you want to try some Hardanger, I definitely recommend the, the Victoria Sampler because they're just so well explained. They're, they're just amazing. So, I love it. Um, the last piece I want to show you is... A somewhat fully finished object. Um, it's one of the heaven and earth earth pieces that I did. It was actually the f um, they did kind of a freebie stitch along on the uh, bulletin board. They used to do it I think every year um, that you would register. They would give you like four or five pictures that you could choose from and you sign up for one and they release a page every couple months. For you to stitch on and at the end of it if you finish you got the rest of the freebie patterns as a bonus and um, whatnot else so I actually signed up for um, I believe it was called story keep treasures it was my very first black and white um, it's not quite fully finished because I still need to put paper and wire on the back but it is framed 
even though I do need to recenter it. Um, but this was, sorry about the glare, there we go. Um, Story Keep Treasures by Selena Finich. And this one, this was actually the very first time I um, subbed out um, variegated threads as well too. It only had about nine colors in it and they were all, um, you know, shades of black, white, gray. There's, I think, a pink or a purple, a pink, a purple, and a green kind of shade in there to get to get the black and white look. And I really wanted to try subbing out. So I went to my LNS and got, pulled all the colors, and I sat there for probably an hour trying to find variegated silks that were that were close. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out, despite the fact that it's variegated. I think it turned out beautiful. So, and I love the, the frame on it. Ah, glare. I love the frame, the frame job on it too, so. Um, yeah, actually, it's all subbed out except for the, the top white here. Um, I couldn't find a white, white enough variegated white, so I st kept with the the B5200 on that one, so yeah, I'm really happy with the way that turned out. So, so, well, I think that's it. That is the end of my first Floss 2 video. I'm starting to kind of lose some natural, natural light here now, so, and I've been rambling for 40 over 40 minutes so um, um, yeah so I uh, just thought I'd show you a few of the things that I'm working on a few of the things that I finished if you'd like to see some more um, uh, of my finishes and whatnot else feel free to leave me a comment below um, feel free to like this video um, I do have some haul coming I placed an order with 123 stitch I was actually hoping it was going to be here yesterday and it never showed up so I'm hoping next week I'll have some haul. I've also placed an order with um, Stitching Bits and Bobs. Um, so hopefully I'll have that um, within a month. That would be, that would be awesome. So um, I have some new patterns and, um, and whatnot else coming with that. So um, thanks for watching if you made it this far. Um, I do appreciate it. And feel free to like this video, add a comment, and I'm going to try and do better with doing the same for all of you as well, too. And thanks for watching. Have a great stitchy weekend, everybody, and hopefully next time I come in, I will have some progress to show you, because that's kind of why we're all here, right? So hopefully I'll have something, something good to show you. Thanks again. Bye-bye. The... Uh progress reports that I get and the enabling. Love it. And like I say, this is about my fourth time trying to uh, to do this this morning and I commend you guys. And here we go again. Yep. Sawyer, you're being a pain in the butt today. And nothing is kind of working for me this morning. <laughs> I feel like everything's... Hi, kitty.